Respected brothers and elders, Allah wa ta'ala has given us the greatest of one of the great ni'mas which we have is time. You know, time which we have is very, very valuable and it's something that you can never get back. Some of mashallah, you bright guys are business owners or working in businesses. And you know that if ever you have excess of money, you can go and put it into a bank and the bank will store it for you. Or if you have valuable belongings, you can put it in a vault. But time is something which is such a thing that you can never get back. Every second that clicks on that top, every second that ticks on that clock and goes, it's never going to come back. Yesterday, will never, you will never see again. Last hour, you will never see again. Last minute, you will never see again. Last second, you will never see again. In our, our body, our whole life is only a collection of a couple of days. Ya ibn Adam, innaka anta ayyam, fa'idha dhahaba yawman dhahaba ba'duk. O son of Adam, you're just a collection of a couple of days. And when one of those days goes, a part of you goes. But you're just a collection of a couple of days. And when one of those days goes, you're finished, one of your little parts finishes. So look, one of the things which we take for granted, Rasulullah mentions, There are two ni'mas, blessings. Many people are in loss. One is health, one is free time. Free time, Allah, is ajeeb because there was a time obviously when obviously people waste time, it's part of human, you can say it's part of human nature, we, we, we will do something. But with the rise of the internet, social media, phone use, internet gaming and so on, this has taken a complete different U-turn. Before, a couple of hours here and there, but re- because of social media, hours upon hours get wasted, hours upon hours on a daily basis get wasted. Uh, the average person, this, while I mention this, social media is actually a growing phenomenon, okay? It's a growing phenomenon, not only in certain countries, but worldwide. Every country has a problem where people now are starting to be more and more engaged in social media. Now, basically, right, the average person spends nearly two hours a day on using social media. Two hours a day. Now, that may sound a lot, but trust me on this one. I, I did it myself. I've done it myself, right? I, I've got into this habit recently because I wanted to. I, I had this bayan on a very lengthy one over about an hour and a half. So I'm just giving you a summary of what I mentioned. I did this myself, right? Because I wanted to che- check how long I'm actually using it for. Whenever I would touch my phone, not for business, not for work, not for madrasa, not for responding to parents, no. When it was just picking up my phone for the sake of picking up my phone. So that means just opening WhatsApp, opening YouTube, going on Twitter going on some other apps. And alhamdulillah, I'm semi-sensible. I don't, I'm not on every social media platform. I'm only on a couple. And a lot of it is because, you know, I, I connect with people. And I, when someone asked me, messaged me, Maulana, you should post every single day. Keep the vibe there. I said, Baisad, when I've got something good to say, I will say it. When I've got nothing good to say, I won't say nothing. Khalas. I'm not, look, I'm, I don't know, call it backward thinking, call it, I'm not going with the algorithm trend on Facebook, bruv, I don't care about no algorithm. I've got something good to say, I will say it. If I've got nothing good to say, I'm not going to say nothing. Khalas. One day I might have three things to say, I might not say nothing for a week. My mind's empty, that means. So this is why, I don't, I'm, not in, I'm not one of these things I just pose or mention for the sake of, No. If, if I don't see no benefit, then no. So like I said, my social media use is still not that, that I would say bad. But nevertheless, whenever I picked up my phone, I had an, what I would do, I would actually go on, I would open up a clock app, stopwatch. I would press start. And then I would use YouTube. Then I would use WhatsApp. Then I would use... I swear I was, I was shocked, right? Every time I finish, I would press stop. Every time I pick up my phone again, I'd start it again. I was, subhanAllah, one an hour, 45 minutes, one hour, 35 minutes, one hour, 15. And I said to myself, this week, I'm going to touch it as least as possible. So that means quickly going through WhatsApp, scanning through them, not even reading all the messages. It's literally scanning through them. So much information. We're actually getting bombarded with information. There's too much. Are we supposed to read everything? No. We're in an age of information. There's... there's Overload. There's overload. How much can we take? So this is why I say social media addiction is a growing problem. And every time we see that blue flicker light on our phone, oh, let me just check the message. Who messaged me? Oh, let me just check this. And what happens once you go into the app, 
then something else will catch your eye. Oh, you'll see like likes going up, one like, two like, one heart, two heart, this retweet, this re-forward, this comment, this, and you're thinking, what is it I'm missing out on? Let me just, let me not be the loser and click on it. So unfortunately, it's becoming a very, very big trend. But nevertheless, right, let, check this out. If a, if a person were to use, if a person were to use social media for two hours a day, that would be approximately five years and four, and four months in that person's lifetime. Five years and four months in that person's lifetime. What can you do with, imagine, someone uses social media phone just two hours a day. That means they wasted five years and four months of their life. I, you know, I did this when I was a kid, you know, because when you're a kid, you kind of be a bit cocky sometimes with teachers. I, I made, alhamdulillah, one of my teachers, wonderful, mashallah, lovely guy. And uh, I came five minutes late for something and I said to him, oh, it's only five minutes. He said, only five minutes. Let's calculate your only five minutes. So then he calculated, if you do this every day, is this many minutes in a week, this many minutes in a month, this many minutes, and if you were to keep this habit up or you're only five minutes late over a 60 year period, this is how much of your life you're going to waste. I was so happy. He wasn't a Muslim, non-Muslim guy. It goes to show that there are some wonderful, wonderful people with some amazing things to, and we can share these common you know, things, but we, we agree. And this ban is not aimed at Muslims, but in humanity in general. SubhanAllah, we are going through a crisis. Ajib. But nevertheless, if a, if a person uses social media just two hours a day, that's five years and four months of that person's life. You may say, what can I do with that much time? Do you know what you could do? You can run 10,000 marathons. By sabak, what the marathon care? What you need to look back there, 50 miles, uh, it's 50 miles in it? 36. 36? 36. 26. I was actually thinking there and back 50. One way then, 26 miles, okay? You can run 10,000 marathons. They say in five years and four months, you can go to the moon and back 32 times. 32 times. Abab soche. A lot of people say, when we recommend people, brother, you know, maybe just read half an hour Quran a day, brother, you know how busy I am. Okay. Well, let's see how much you use your social media. Let's be realistic. Like I said, I was also in, in, in denial. No, I don't use it that bad. But then I started putting a timer on my phone. And I've done this. And believe me, and that's why I thought I'm going to talk about this this week. Trust me, if you do this one thing, every time you touch your... Look, business is business. But when you're touching your phone for business, let it be business. I'm saying, because you need naturally, you can't time yourself a bit because it's work. You need to spend time doing that. Or it's really essential that you need to send a message, maybe a family member, but that should be separate perhaps. Or maybe even include it. Because sometimes one is essential speech and one is we're just waffling for the sake of waffling, fooling ourselves that we need to have those conversations. Where are we going to draw the line? So I said this, set a timer on your phone. Every time you go on your phone, press start on your stopwatch. Now go on your phone. And then you press stop. You will be gobsmacked of the results on a 24 hour period, how much you spend on your phone. Because I was as well. And I'm thinking to myself now, I, I, one day I said, I'm not gonna do it, right, 54 minutes. I said, next day I'm gonna try harder, 49. All right, this day I'm gonna try even harder, 42. I'm st still 42 minutes of my life. It's still half an hour of my life. What did I get out of reading those messages? What did I get out of reading those people's tweets? Did it make any difference in my life? A lot of the time, no. Just because I heard of a certain message, did it help me? No. And this is the problem, but check this out. This is the lower, lower stage. There's a higher stage. You know what it is? Some people have an addiction where they spend up to nine hours a day. Nine hours. And this is easy to believe. You know youngsters, right? They're playing games like Fortnite, Minecraft, Roblox, and all these other, if, it's, if I've pronounced that right, you've got all these different games. Man, these kids are playing for hours. One of the kids in the madrasa, I asked him, I said, because he, he didn't do his homework. Well, he did it, but he didn't get it signed. So we have an usul that when you do homework, the parents should sign. Why? We're not trying to make life difficult for the parents. Like in Unkobi, so they should have a bit of diljaspi. Better, what did you get for homework? Okay, show me, sit down, and I'm gonna sign it. There's gotta be some communication, okay? We're not a kindergarten, we're not a nursery, we're a madrasa. We need a bit of communication with parents. So what happened was, and the kid didn't get a sign, so I said to him, Vita, why didn't you get a sign? He goes, oh, well, I, I forgot, you see, because what it is, well, I went home, I played Fortnite, then I did my homework, but I forgot. Oh, okay, Fortnite, so how much do you play Fortnite? He goes, only an hour a day. Okay, fair enough, you play an hour a day. But the thing is this, 
it doesn't just sometimes remain an hour, sometimes it goes a lot more because I started asking him questions, okay? Now one thing is, religiously, every day, one hour a day, he feels he has to play. What we're doing is we're creating addicts. We're creating social media gaming addicts. What we don't even realize. Because every time they go on, they're getting this dopamine rush every single day. You try taking that away from that child, he or she is going to rebel because they're so used to receiving something. And this is why I'm saying, I don't want, I'm not saying we should deny children fun. There's ways to have fun. But it doesn't mean that because we feel if I don't give my child an iPad and this tablet and this device and this gaming, then my child won't keep up with the Jones of society. Well, think of it like this. Imagine that same child were to use those same efforts in reading books, creativity, playing outside, doing something with their life. It's a whole different ball game. We're, we're actually raising children that are solely addicted to devices. They're just holding devices. There was this really interesting sort of, call it like a short artistic video someone sent me. And it showed like a child really happy playing on the seesaw, then running and going on a swing. And it said this child was happy. He was like this. And it goes, takes you for a whole series. But then he received the phone. Game over. And that's what it was. Or was it end of story? What they were trying to show was he was a very lovely kid, growing up, being strong, running around, joking around, getting healthy. He received the phone, and then it just showed this light in his face, and he was just tapping screen, end of. End of the story. Because they know once he received that phone, khalas, he's a goner. And you know what, it's funny, because you know you have people like Steve Jobs and, and, and the likes. I'm sure it was him, but there are other, if I'm not mistaken, there was a Facebook founder as well. They also mentioned these in, in, interesting things that I, they actually are against the idea of giving children unbridled, untamed, a constant use of, of devices. But okay, I'm sure it was Steve, if I'm not mistaken, or it could have, it actually might even be Bill Gates actually, who had this idea that not to give them free reign, meaning to limit it. Now this is what I say, now look obviously because if we say don't give it, it's not going to happen, it's not practical. Because nowadays everyone's doing it and your child will then feel that they're left out, oh it must be Islam is the problem. So then there's got to be a middle line, we've got to draw somewhere. So I, this is what I do, and if, I'm just sharing you my own thing, if you agree with it, fine, if you don't, don't agree, it's, it's alright, we're all here to differ and I'm not trying to put my opinion on yours over yours. What I do, I've made a strict usul in my house. Monday to, th Monday to Thursday, zero nothing. No phones, no tablets, no computers, nothing. Nothing, zero. When it comes Friday, they come in from school, fine. Now you can do a little saying. Watch, watch something, I don't mind. Yeah, but then also there's another thing. When, a ch when my child, when my children, we want to watch a certain thing, okay, what do you want to watch? I will Google it and I will watch the parent rating. Is there sex, violence, swearing? There's so many things. Parents, look, you need to be more savvy. I'm not saying deny children. I'm saying give it to them, knowing the, what the harms that can be if you're not checking what they're doing. So this is why it's essential that as parents take that active step. First of all, if you're going to give them devices, make sure certain things are downloaded, certain softwares to keep them protected. And I'll give you one for free, which I use. So firstly, every one of you is going to have some form of network provider that's going to provide you your service. Tika, what you do, get your antivirus through them. You can get spyware and all the things through them, okay? Malware and other programs. But then there's another thing which I use, right, which is called an AdAware Blocker Pro. They're not paying me, I'm not getting sponsored, but I'm just telling you what I use, okay? You know sometimes you go on a site and boom, you'll get a pop-up. Well, that blocks those. Because the last thing you want kids is that they go on and search something and all of these, you know, like, clip, like, nausebillah, but the things that pop up are horrible. I mean, like, porn porn pornographic videos, things related to violence and, and horrible things. And while I'm on this, let me say this. There's a trend which is going now around recently. Have you heard of the Momo challenge? Oh my God, what, what a zaman are we in? Basically, just to cut, cut a long story short, there's a Japanese model that someone made, okay? And what it is, is that some hackers, how, where, I don't know the full story, where it originated from, I just know just the meaty, meaty bits. I've done a little bit of research into it just to keep my own family safe, and then I had the discussion with them. What it is, is that there is this sort of like, they, 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 they hacked certain, certain programs, certain channels, certain clips that they will show you this picture, this image, and it's quite a scary image for a child, say, of a young age. You know, it looks like a very un... sort of not a look good-looking face. And then they kind of like, say, give, you, uh, give us your number, give us this, and for example, start asking them to do certain dares. So one child was asked to put a metal screwdriver into a plug. Now, God forbid if that child did that, 
he would have been dead. And then there are other things where child have been, children have been bullied. So they're now, for example, if you now, I'm going to tell your parents, and you better do this now. You now have to do this for me. You better now do this there. Now, subhanAllah, some lives have been claimed of children worldwide because of this. As parents, are we aware? If we are aware, how do we solve the problem? How do we minimize the problem? This is the challenge of parenting in the 21st century. It's not just the case of giving them a device and say, gee, because every Jones of society has one, you have one too. And that's where it boils down to, isn't it? Let's be raw. Because I don't want my kid feeling left out, so I'm going to give it to somebody else. Uh, I'm going to give my child a device. Okay, fine. But then can't you not regulate it as a parent? I'm sorry, but I put that down to poor, poor parenting. It's poor parenting. If, who on earth, right, subhanAllah, you would be giving them something which can be used as a double-edged sword. Would it not be applicable, practical, apt? more beneficial for them to for you as parents to have some control over that so like i said what i i'm just sharing you what i personally do you can agree to differ that's all good first antivirus a sick one right hardcore i pay for it as well to make sure that i'm not getting some cheap knockoff one i'm actually paying for one and the one i paid for subhanallah my local seven friday was was a good i went and paid for one 70 pound for a year you know what i mean because i'm i'm happy to pay that money for the safety of my family you know phishing scams and bank fraud and all this other stuff then on top of that, certain like uh, pop-up blockers and so on. Okay, the Adware Blocker Pro, which I downloaded. That's another one. The third thing was right is that we did this. Alhamdulillah, I've got three children. So my youngest one, obviously, he's not. Of, of, he doesn't. He 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 doesn't and cannot use things. So you've got now my son and my daughter. What I've, what I've done is that my daughter's account is linked to my wife's phone. My son's account is linked to mine. So when we got, I gave them a tablet, they asked you for a registration. I put my own email address, everything was set up, the Play Store, the Apple Store, whatever you want to do, it's going to go through my ID. I'm going to download your games. And everything's password protected. So even if they want to download something which is P, you know, rated of a very small rate, rating, they can't, everything's got to go through me. So I will check it. Okay, cool. Why do you want to download this? Okay, fine. And then we will download. Okay, there's a bit of give and take. You know what I mean? I'm not expecting for you to 24-7 to read Quran, do zikr, only pray, uh, you know, only give da'wah. Okay, I appreciate if you want to have some time, all and good. But this is part and parcel of the challenging of parenting. And secondly, I don't, it's not just unbridled use. No, limited use. Play for two hours, fine. Now have a break. Pray salah. Now it's time for food. Have, hey, listen, your children need boundaries. Boundaries. If you say you can use your phone for two hours, don't be sucked into an emotional thing where they say, oh, please, half an hour more, please. No. I said two hours, I want your phone. I want your device. Put it away. And this is not about being harsh. It's not about being crude. It's not about being horrible. I'm, I promise you, you will be saving your kids a lot of heartache in the long run. Because what happens is that we need to learn to disconnect. It's not reality. A phone is not reality. Now, subhanAllah, right, a lot of countries fall into this same gun. Social media apps are used only for filth. You know what I mean? I find it shocking, subhanAllah, that every... Oh, I just don't understand, really. I mean, for me, I, I, why is everything that can be used beneficial? There's more people using it for negative than positive. You know what I mean? And like I said, look, we're not here to police people. It's a free world, free country, do what you like. At the end of the day, I, I think as a, as, a, as a Muslim, I have a right to kind of talk about what I think is beneficial for my community. And if people agree with those sentiments, subhanAllah. If you don't, then don't. Fine, that's all good. But like I said, this is becoming a big, big problem worldwide. Children, six hours, five hours, up to 10 hours, I've heard. I heard a ridiculous one, up to 15 hours once. Waking up for Fajr Salah, jumping straight on a game and then playing until 11 o'clock at night with small intervals in between. What's happening to that kid's brain? That brain's going to fry. You know, there's no concept of any, anything else, just playing games. But even the mother's bringing the food up to the room. Bruv, call him down and say, come and eat food with your family. He's not a nawab yet. Don't treat him like one. Treat him like a child. That doesn't mean we don't look at their izzat enough. You give izzat enough. But it doesn't mean you treat them like royalty. Okay, you're like waitering on the children. You're destroying the children. You're not helping them. So this is why, right, Subhan, there's a lot of things which I can say, but just last, but I want to just touch on this one point. That, yeah, so I covered obviously now accounts and keeping an eye, and it's not about not trusting. It's not that I don't trust my children, okay? But naturally, what it is, is that I want to make sure that my children are safe. So in time to time, I will just keep a check, make sure everything's okay, and 
you know, because at the end of the day, you know, these sort of Momo challenges and these other sort of cult-like challenges, they, they, they actually, they kind of like bully you into saying you can't tell anyone. And if, we te- if you tell anyone, we're going to tell your parents, we're going to cause you harm. So people get in, a lot of children are being sucked into this thinking, if I now tell somebody, I'm going to get hurt, someone's going to get hurt. Do you see what happened? So they get kind of psychologically trapped. So we need to notice those trends. Like how you can spot the signs of drug addicts, you need to spot the signs of also these sorts of things as well. It's the times we're living in. I want to just finish off on this last point, as I said. In terms of, it mentioned that those youngsters, those youngsters who spend five hours a day or more on phones or devices or social media and something, clinically proven, they say they're two times more likely, two times more likely to suffer from depression. More likely. So you're not doing your kids a favor. We're not doing our children favors here, okay, by just giving them unbridled use and say just no problem. Limit it, regulate it, interval it, and let, let there be a reward system as well. Okay, do your homework, then you can do some playing. You can do this and then you can, bruv, there's got to be some give and take. You know what I mean? Don't let the children just dictate what they want to do. If you can't control your child now at the age of 5, 10, 10 15, what, you think you're going you're to control them when they reach beyond that? You're the man of the house, you're the, you're the mother of the house, or if the, if the, the sister's listening. You are the person who has control over this. Control it. But then, like I said, in terms of demographics, young, so, young females are more addicted than boys when it comes to social media use. And that's why, unfortunately, it's becoming very, very common that it was, it, uh, it's becoming a, like a big problem. Uh, girls are also becoming very conscious of their looks, very kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Very, they have sometimes a negative perception about themselves. They feel an, inadequate. They don't look beautiful enough. Because let me tell you something. I don't know if you guys, obviously some of you must know, you should know. Bloody hell, we're living in a zamana where everyone has a phone. You can airbrush your photos. You can Photoshop them. You can make your face look different. So for example, you can take a picture. You can now suddenly widen the eyes. You can widen, you know, like slimmer the face, make it more brighter. It seemed more, yeah, you, you, standard phones. Standard phones, you can do this. So what's happening is a lot of people are, are, are a lot of girls especially, a lot more girls than boys. They take a lot of photos, and these are our daughters, our Muslim sisters, our Muslim mothers and aunties and so on. They take pictures. Have you ever noticed how perfect people look in their pictures? You think, whoa, that's a great picture. Rav, it's air, air shopped, airbrushed. Don't be fooling for the, for the gimmick. Subhanallah, there was a case. Where someone, he, he, he saw someone's profile picture, thought she was attractive. When he met her, he goes, hey, I'm not marrying that. I'm not marrying that. What she was presenting was something else. And anyway, this is just one example. There's hundreds and hundreds of examples. I, this is just one I read recently, so I'm just sharing it. But look, our girls, because some of them wear headscarves and so on, some of them do feel very unattractive. They feel ugly. They feel like they're stupid. Because that's not what society makes them feel. That's the vibe, isn't it? If you put a, a hijab on your head, you're forced. Perhaps you're, you're coerced. Your inferiority complex. So to now feel that inferiority complex, then out comes the airbrush photos to kind of balance that. Because when you have one extreme, you have the other. But this is all born down to psychology, okay? When you feel that on one side, then you go to another side to create an, create an equilibrium. If that makes sense. Okay, if it doesn't, don't worry, just understand this much, girls are more susceptible to becoming addicts and suffering from depression more likely than boys. And our young girls in our community, they're always seeking social validation, they're taking pictures with a smile, now whitening the teeth, whitening the, and waiting for those comments. And some of this boils down to how we interact with our sisters, our daughters, our mothers, and our aunts. Because unfortunately, coming from, and I'm, I'm going to say this, I'm going I'm to deliberately say it, from an Asian culture, boys are more prided and, than girls. Whether we want to admit and say, nini, walsa, nini, asa, no, it is like that. We have to be honest. And it's not just Asian, I'm telling you, there's a, a, lot of, a lot of places, okay? But I'm just saying, because obviously now, I, from my experience, this is more common... We have this barrier to show muhabbat and love between our, us and our children, more so daughters. Because sons are going to be who are going to provide for us when we get older. They're going to look after us. They're going to take care of the businesses and look after the family estates. The daughters are going to go into someone else's family and be else's, not ours. That's a really jahil mentality. That, that needs islah. Because then when you look at her as your daughter, she's your own flesh and blood. She, should, she deserves the exact haq as your son. They are no different. 
But anyway, khair, that's another bayan, inshallah. But like I said, women, young girls, our young sisters, mothers, daughters, and so on, they are more susceptible. They are more vulnerable to this. So we should go with a bit more of an open mind and understand that girls can also feel more vulnerable and just to take out some time for them. As fathers, brothers, sons, and so on, give them that affirmation. Tell them, mashallah, you know, you look really nice. You're not going hell for that. You're not going hell, brother. It's a good thing. It's a good thing to try and show some emotion sometimes. Because if you don't give that, well, have a guess what? She's going to go to TikTok to get it. YouTube to get it. Facebook, WhatsApp, Snapchat, Instagram, and everything else to get it. So, inshallah, let's try and understand these issues. There, this is a whole, like I said, I, I had this bayan and we, over one and a half hours. A lot of things can be mentioned, but just understand this much. Each and every one of us has a device. Use it or abuse it. That's it. Use it for your benefit. And I'll just share this once more. I know I'm going over, just finish off on this, but you'll, try, you'll like this. Trust me on this. Whenever you touch your phone, Go, set a clock app on your phone. Let me show you myself now. So just so you know, I'm not blagging. This is my clock app, right? Rav, clock, you can look, that's how much I used it today so far. 21 minutes and two seconds. And when I touch my phone again, resume, there you go. Can you see it going up? And then I press stop. So, so far today, I've used my phone for 21 minutes, which is not work-related, not business-related. Fazul. Just going on WhatsApp, what are people saying? Going a bit of YouTube, a bit of Twitter, 21 minutes. I could have read a... Give another five minutes, I could have read a spada of Qur'an, a juz of Qur'an. How then do I have the audacity to say, I don't have time to read Qur'an. <laughs> You've got time to check next man's messages on WhatsApp. So you see, that's where you put it into context. context. Get the, get, put the app on, check your timing, and believe me, you'll make dua for me, trust me. Allah give us tawfiq, inshallah. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi. Gunashadu la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruk wa tubulik.